Okay, you are gonna love this one. I'm at the gym this morning and I overhear these two guys, you know, the really big beefy guys, and um, one says to the other that um, his, his girlfriend made some, you know, new tofu dish, yeah, sure. you know, she's trying something yeah. else, she's trying something new out, and um, he says, <laughs> he goes, babe, I am not gonna be eating any of that tofu, it's just gonna give me man boobs. And the other dude says, oh yeah, I wouldn't touch that stuff either, that, I mean, everybody says that's gonna give you man boobs. <sighs> you did not. I, <laughs> So you I could, did not. You know how I am. You know how I am. I, I could, I could not help myself. You know, we all have our like gym outfits on, like you know, like kind of like. So I went up to him and I said, "Yo, dude, tofu ain't gonna give you these." Okay. <laughs> I, they lost it. But yeah, am I right? Am I right? You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And you know, I mean, it is funny how you know how how many people, with, how many guys at the gym have a PhD in bro science, right? Yeah. And, and in yeah. fact, you're actually right. So, so not only does tofu and soy not give you man boobs, you know what else it doesn't give you? Breast cancer. Okay. This, with this, this, let's talk about this. This, this, I hear this all the time. People come into the Center for Plant Based Living with a lot of different ailments, or or not, but specifically breast cancer. I hear, you know, and they. The, their healthcare providers maybe don't want to have too much soy in your diet. Right, sure. And, and that's just some miscon. There's a lot of misconceptions about soy. Okay. So, so you know, estrogen, so breast tissue has estrogen receptors. And we know for a fact that overstimulation of the estrogen receptors actually can increase your risk for breast cancer. Right. Uh, actually, it can also increase the risk for prostate cancer in men, by the way. Um, okay. And so, and there are estrogen-like compounds in plants, and they're called phytoestrogens. And we see them in things like, mainly in soy, but also things like sweet potatoes and yams, things like that. So, but the reason that these phyto, these plant-based estrogens, don't increase your risk for, for breast cancer, and in fact, can help lower your risk for breast cancer, is they weakly bind to those estrogen receptors, and they actually block the effect of estrogen. Okay, so you're telling me that by eating more soy, this might have a protective effect against cancer, breast cancer. That's exactly right. And in fact, even women who have already had breast cancer, yeah. it decreases the risk of recurrence. The, I mean, if you look see, at, that's but it, huge. And, and if you, if you look, you know, kind of at populations of people, who has the lowest rates of breast cancer in the whole world? The Japanese and then yeah. the parts of China who eat a lot of soy. Right. And, you know, unfortunately, tragically, really, when they if they immigrate to the Western world, to the United States, within five, 10 years, their risk for breast cancer goes up to the same as the U.S. population, which is one of the highest in the world. Hence the Western diet. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. It's, it's crazy, really. So, all right, so if there has to be a good and a bad, right? I right. mean, so, <clears throat> pardon me, if you're talking, if we're talking about soy today, then are what types of soy do we want to be eating? Yeah, that's a great question because it does make a difference. It yeah, does make a question. right. So in general, you want your, the soy to be kind of as close to the ground as it was grown, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about whole bean preparations, we have things like this is just edamame, right? Which yeah. is just soybeans, My right? My favorite snack. Uh, tempeh. So tempeh is a whole, a whole beans, whole soybean mm -hmm. product that's fermented, right? So it's really great. Now soybeans, soy milk is also good. So soy milk is just, you just press the soy and, and such. And, and you get the milk out and make some milk. And then lastly, we have tofu. And what tofu is, we just, we take soy milk and you curdle it and you scrape the curds off and you press it in a block and that's tofu. And in fact, if you sometimes you go to a Chinese restaurant and it'll say bean curds on the, on the, on the, on the oh. menu, that's just tofu. That's just tofu. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, because I see it pretty often. Right, I mean, sure. I go out to, you know, diff you know yeah. more ethnic recipes yeah, or, sure restaurants and yeah. they do have it on different types or worded differently on the menus. Right. Okay, so now we know what to eat. Right. How much do we should we be eating to have those anti cancer effects? So research suggests we need about two to four servings a day. Oh uh, that's not a lot. And, and by the way, just back to the man boob issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what really causes man boobs? Well it turns out it's actually obesity. Um, because there's, we used to think that fat tissue was just a storage vessel for fat. It's where we stored the extra energy that we could use later on. Yeah. But it turns out that fat tissue is highly metabolically active, and it actually has an, an enzyme called aromatase. 
And what aromatase does is it takes male hormone testosterone and converts it to estrogen. So just like real estrogen stimulates breast tissue growth, and in fact is the reason obesity is also a risk factor for, 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 for breast cancer in women, it can cause man boobs in men because it's too much estrogen in their body because of the adipose tissue, right? And it could, that can, it's one of the reasons that obesity is a contributing factor to things like erectile dysfunction too, which is, oh, you know, because wow. it lowers testosterone levels. So, so the real cause of man boobs, by the way, is not soy, it's, it's, it's obesity as a matter of fact. Oh my gosh, okay, okay, lots of information to take in. Yeah. But now that we know right. what to eat, what types or what forms of soy to eat, right. I would love to share with you one of my very favorite tofu recipes. I can't wait. All right, let's get cooking. Jim, I think you're going to really enjoy this recipe. I've been eating this for years. I'm going to start off by using this, um, tofu, this super firm tofu. Okay. So really just whatever firm tofu you can find. And there's always water. I really like these vacuum packs sure. because there's not so much water in there. You can feel how, how heavy that is, oh, yeah. right? That has yeah, really like a, a lot of weight to it, yeah, right? Sure, sure, yeah, sure. So I, I have this bowl here just to catch our water. Usually I'll just do it over the sink. So Karen, you mentioned that super firm tofu. Um, are you saying that there's other kinds of tofu that you can use? Yeah, you, well, you can use a, a, a firm tofu, a super, to a super firm tofu, um, but you really want to stick with a, what, the firmest tofu you can find because that'll just obviously stick so together, right? So is that more right? like a sponge? It's more of a sponge for the flavor, the more, the firmer it is? No, well, there's just less water in it, oh, got to it, be got honest. It, got okay, it. and now this is what you can do. We still have, it's a pretty wet block, right? Now you want to take either some paper towels or a clean kitchen towel and wrap it up. And I just kind of roll it, wrap, wrap, roll, and then just give it a really firm squeeze just to get out as much sure. liquid as possible. Yeah, yeah. Not to dissipate it, right? You right, don't want right. to crumble it because right. it's not that type of recipe. But we're going to keep it nice and blocky, if you will. Keep it right, all intact. Sure. But get some of that water out. Get the water out because the more water you can get out, that leaves room for your marinade. marinade. Got it. Well, that yep. makes sense. Yep. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So we'll probably just do half of a block right now. Yeah. And this is real, real easy. Don't blink, right? You might miss it. <laughs> so we're going to cut it in half. I'll save that part for a little bit later. And I'm just going to cut this down mm -hmm. into bite-size-ish sure. sure, pieces. Sure, sure. And really, you know, however you want to cut it. You could even just do like little fillets, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do this. Cut this. Cut this. Into there we have it. Bite-sized pieces. Now, I like to marinate. Whenever I'm marinating anything, um, tofu, vegetables, whatever, is I'll take the marinade, and this one is, if I can recall, it has uh, coconut aminos, a little bit of sweetener, so some date paste, sriracha, right. garlic, onion, really whatever you, whatever marinade you like. Right. And I put it straight into a big bag. sealable bag. Yeah. <laughs> And then the tofu goes in there. It's all ready to soak up all of those beautiful flavors. And then try to squeeze out as much of the air as you possibly can. And give it a nice soft mix, if you will. Yeah, just so that all the sides are well coated. And then, as I said, take out all of that air. And then just pop it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. But I mean, I like to do this overnight because yeah. I really want that tofu to have an, op an opportunity to soak in all of those flavors. So every time you open up the fridge, just turn the bag over. So is that why, you know, when you marinate like that, because, you know, a lot of people, if you just eat a piece of raw, you know, tofu like that. Right. And, you know, people think it tastes like cardboard. So that by, because the tofu is like a sponge, when we marinate it, that's how you absorb flavors. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's it doesn't amazing. matter. You can choose yeah. any marinade you want. I mean, you could do a mustard base. You could do a oh, tomato yeah. base. Yeah, yeah. Soy. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? So then we're going to let this marinate uh, for a little while. Then we'll come back and we're going to air fry it so it cooks up real fast. Great. Okay. I told you not to blink. We're ready. Doesn't this place smell great? It does. And that looks great too, I tell you. Okay. What I've done is I took our tofu that we marinated earlier and um, they hung out it hung out in the fridge for a few hours 
And then I just put them into the air fryer for about 400 degrees. Um, I let them cook for 10 minutes, and then I shook this basket. Sure, then, you yeah, know, yeah. And then uh, I let them cook for another five to seven, but you can go as much as like 10 minutes if you want, just however long sure. you want them, if you want more, more well done, more blackened, but whatever, it's up to you. So tell me about the air fryer. Why did you choose to cook these in an air fryer? You know I love my air fryer. Yeah, of course. Okay, it's, it's a quick, quick cook. If, you, you know, if you're cooking during the summer, it will not heat up the rest of your kitchen. And typically, also when you go out to restaurants and you see uh, crispy chick or crispy tofu, that has been it's full of oil because it's either been deep fried right, or pan fried, right, right? right? And we can do this. We can quickly cook tofu without any oil. You still get the crispy outside oh, and wow. the soft inside. That's I know amazing. it's so good. That's amazing. Well, okay. can we try? Yeah. Well, and here's a oh, little. Oh, right. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I know. I'm so I know. <laughs> Can't help so, it. Sorry. Sorry. This is a peanut there, sauce. There, there, a peanut uh, bait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> base sauce, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> and this recipe will be, be down below. So you always need a dipping sauce when you have tofu. I like to always have a dipping sauce. So, all right, let's get going. Let's get it going here. Mm, I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Mm, so good. Oh my gosh. I could eat these all night. I know, I know.